Once upon a time, somewhere in Ukraine, three learned rabbis were fleeing from the Cossack soldiers. Shabbat arrived, and they hoped to stay put, but they were not free from their pursuers. They were carrying donations that they collected from three synagogues, 30 rubles, just enough for the whole set of books for their yeshiva. Now, they came upon Broad River, and they realized there was no way for them to get across, no bridge in sight. They spotted a boatman at a distance, and they called out to him across the water. And the man came to shore and agreed to take him to the other side, but they had to pay him 30 rubles. He was afraid that the hot Cossacks would uh, find out that he helped them, so the price was high, but so was the risk. The rabbis debated because it was Shabbat already, so paying money was not right. And that's all the money they had. And, and to make it worse, these were donations. These were not their money. Nina, one of them wanted to dishonor Shabbat by handling money anyway, so they tried to get out of that decision. Finally, one of them said, here's the money, take us across, quickly. And after they were ashore and closer to home, the two rabbis that could not decide confronted the one who paid the boatman for his hasty transgression of Shabbat. Uh, he said, well, maybe Hashem uh, was going to save us some other way. Why did you do this? The decisive rabbi replied, yes, I handled the money. I paid the man to let, I let go of the money five hours ago, and it is still Shabbat, and you're still holding the same 30 rubles late into the night. Sometimes letting go is not so easy. Sometimes certain things are very difficult to let go. So my drash today is called Letting Go. Why? Because in the story as we read it, our weekly passage, Judah, uh, he defends Benjamin from the consequences of Joseph's cup being found in his possession. Remember that story. Joseph he did not want to let Benjamin go. He enjoyed his company for a while, so he came up with a genius way to keep him close. So Benjamin was set up. And now he looked like a thief. And Joseph, who pretended to be this harsh Egyptian ruler, now demanded justice. Everything was lined up against letting Benjamin go out of Egypt. So in our passage, as we read, Judah, he recaps the facts of what happened and what led to that moment as he is getting ready to plead for the youth. Now, one fact as we read this passage becomes very clear, at least who jumped out at me, is that Judah's awareness of how special Benjamin was to Jacob. We read that in our first reading, you could see that. He desperately tries to communicate to this harsh Egyptian ruler how tender his father's relationship with Benjamin is. And he earnestly wants Joseph, this Egyptian, to understand what it would mean if old Jacob had to lose Benjamin like that. So we come to that point of the very end of uh, our first passage that we read. In Genesis 44, uh, verse 30, Judah explains with very colorful words. He says, V'nafsho keshura v'nafsho, which translates as his life is bound up with his life. <clears throat> now what he means by that, <clears throat> I'm sorry, what he means by that is that Jacob's life is his nefesh, okay, is tied to Benjamin's life, to his nefesh. V'nafsho keshura v'nafsho. They are together in this. So the question that is supposed to be in the mind of Joseph is how can one let something like that go? He wants him to understand Jacob's sacrifice of even sending the young boy to Egypt, how much of a step that was, 
and he now wants him to realize what would happen if he decides to withhold Benjamin from the old father, Jacob. That is his pleading. That is what he's trying to say. And there's so many levels on which we can understand that their souls are tied, that their lives are tied. One thing is very easy for us to grasp is the beauty and the depth of their relationship. And so uh, that is why in this story, exactly because their souls, their, their nephesh is bound up together, Judah offers himself instead of Benjamin. It is such a huge step. Judah has come to terms with this intense attachment that Jacob had to one of his sons. He was not angry with Jacob uh, for favoring Benjamin, not like he was as it was with Joseph. He was angry about Joseph, but he's able to let go when it comes to Benjamin being a favorite. Letting go is not at all easy in this whole entire story. It is not easy for Jacob. It is not easy for Judah. It is not easy for Joseph. All of them are having to let go of something in this story. So let's consider a lesson for ourselves uh, from this story today. And a lesson is this. Find the courage to let go of things that you think you can't lose. Find the courage to let go of things, the things you can't, you think you can't lose. Letting go, in the end, is an act of faith. That's what it takes. Jacob had to let Benjamin go to Egypt with his older brothers. This was a big deal. Now, I want you to think for a moment to yourselves in your own lives. I want you to think perhaps of something in your life that has that same status. Uh, maybe you have a Benjamin of your own. I don't know. I do not know what these things mean to you personally. But consider that. Abraham, as I look to his story, the story we read every time in prayer, Abraham had to do something similar with Yitzhak. Remember? One day... That's what he was asked to do, to let go. And perhaps one day, maybe not now, maybe, just maybe, it will become necessary for you to let go of something that you value the most. The same way as Abraham valued Yitzhak, the same way as Jacob valued Benjamin would you have the courage when that moment comes? And that's why I say find the courage to let go of the things that you think you can't let go. Now, Jacob was not sure that he could survive the loss if something happened to his only son of Rachel that he had left. Yet Jacob overcame his fear. He overcame his fear because of his concern for the entire family. In the end... Jacob loved all of his sons. Now you may walk away with the idea that he only loved Joseph and Benjamin, but he loved all of his sons. And he proved it by taking the risk when his, with his youngest son, by putting him like this on the line. All of their lives at that moment in the story were in danger. And Benjamin's participation in this journey to Egypt it stood in a way of getting more food for the entire community, for the whole clan. So looking at the big picture, it helps. It helps to see really what's at stake. So Jacob, he found courage to trust Judah to let go Benjamin for the sake of his entire clan. Because it says the whole family, that they would live and not die. And then when he did that, something amazing happened with Judah. Just then. I believe it happened right then. In his turn, what Judah did, is he found also courage to let go of his own very life. Do you realize what he was putting on a line for Benjamin? His own very life. Now this is what Joseph wanted to see in his brothers. That kind of sacrificial love 
That is what he yearned for. That's why he pretended. That's why the whole charade happened. And this is an amazing story because the whole time we, the readers, are the only ones who know what's going on. The brothers don't realize this. He wanted to see that. So when Judah put himself on the line like that, instead, giving up his life for Benjamin, that was enough. That's what Joseph needed to see. Letting go of Jacob's weakness for Judah and this finding of courage is not something small. It really is an amazing character quality that we can all learn from. That's what's in this Parsha. Now, Yeshua is another example who let go of his own life. He taught us that in order to gain life, one must be willing to lose it. You have to be able to put it down, he said. And putting down his own life for a person who is the closest, what greater gift can there be? As I read those words in the gospel and his teaching, perhaps he has been thinking about this very story. I'd like to think that that was the story in his mind when he said those words that he said. <coughs> now I'm going to say this, hopefully no one in this room, no one right here right now, uh, is going to be asked to lay down their life or anything like that. But the principle, the principle, it remains. Sometimes we have to be like the decisive rabbi in my story and just do it. Sometimes we have to find the courage to let go when it is necessary. We have to look at the big picture. That is what helps us along the way. Even the things that we are most afraid of losing. Sometimes we can't imagine losing. The Lord may call upon us to find courage to do that. So in closing, I will say, may the Lord teach us and help us how to learn, how to let go, if that is what's needed from us, if that is when that moment comes, that we would be able to find that courage.